I think you mentioned a breadth of topics that have a lot of impact. And I also, again, citing back to the podcast with Dr. Thambe, I wanted to learn more about like, how do you decide which products do you work on? As in, so I know, I, I know there is a variety of applications, variety of uh, problems that can be solved because the problems are endless. But in terms of AI applications, we can either solve all of them or maybe none of them. So how do you decide like which projects interests you versus which is possible versus that aligns with Google research interests versus you have people who can actually make a difference working on those projects. So how do you manage these multiple entry points and try to finalize a project that you might be working on for the next few years? No, that's actually a, an excellent question. And, and I think it's a very important one because uh, what I feel, again, having been also a graduate student and as I joined kind of industry in my early years, I mean, I can relate to what often goes on in the mind of a young researcher. I mean, uh, I remember when I graduated with a PhD, I mean, I was very excited about that particular area and I wanted to solve further problems right in that area. Uh, and that's a very natural thing because, and often this is how we as researchers choose problems. We have certain area of expertise and, and often our research interests are aligned with that expertise. And sometimes what we do is we say, oh, we look at the available literature and we say, okay, existing state of the art is able to solve this problem. Let me pick a problem which is not adequately addressed right by the existing state of the art which i believe i can solve right and therefore i will be able to write a paper right i will be able to <laughs> claim here's my advance right over the previous state of the art and I'll, I'll be able to write a paper everybody will be happy so so often kind of we have a tendency right to choose problems on that basis what's that delta right to the existing state of the art which i'm a, interested in, which I'm reasonably confident I can solve. And, and I, I would say it is fine to be in that mode sometimes, but if that is your dominant mode, you are really missing out uh, on something much bigger. Because, because in my view, the right way to pick problems is to do answer a series of so what questions, right? You say, okay, uh, let's say, uh, I say, I want to solve this problem. So you should be asking me, so what? I mean, what would happen? I mean, if you were to solve that problem, then I give a response. And I think then you should ask another, so what question? Okay, I mean, yeah, I mean, I say, let's say, I, I say, oh, I'll build multilingual models. So what? I mean, what will happen? Oh, this way, uh, I mean, that uh, uh, farmer's son that I was talking about, that laborer's daughter, she would also be able to, in some sense, access information in her native language. You ask another, so what? And then you, I give another response based on that saying, look, this is going to now make so much of a difference, right? It could improve whatever this girl's learning ability. She could now become much more successful in her career. And so, so after a series of these, so what questions, if you end up with answers that suggest that the impact is going to be significant. In my view, that's a worth problem. That's a problem worth solving. Because mm -hmm. if after a series of so what, you end up with something which, yes, I mean, maybe improves things a little bit by a, by a small degree for a small set of people and so on, perhaps the problem is not worth uh, going after, right? I mean, it's, I mean, maybe it's, I mean, I'm not making a judgment call, it's not worth solving. But I mean, with your limited time, with your finite amount of time that you have, right? Perhaps uh, in your lifetime and so on, perhaps you should be focused on bigger problems. So now, now a problem with some of these bigger problems is you realize, look, I don't have the skills, right? I don't have the ability to solve that bigger problem by myself. So A, it puts you now in some sense, it takes you out of your comfort zone. Uh, uh, when you pick these larger problems. Uh, and one of the things that you have to do is not just solve the problem, try to solve the problem alone. You have to now team up with other people and often team up with people who bring, who have complementary expertise to what you have. 
because sometimes also we have this very tendency right that oh uh, i work on natural language processing or i work on computer vision let me work with other researchers also in computer vision and yes we kind of advance right this state of the art and also that is how we often structure even teams right i mean we have people with computer vision expertise all working together and so on i think every once in a while you should also be looking at okay here's this big problem that i want to solve which is going to require expertise not just in computer vision it will require natural language processing it will under require hci expertise it will require some social science kind of a uh, 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 background maybe some economics ideas from economics and maybe uh, uh i mean uh, likewise when i'm looking at the world of healthcare maybe it requires some medical kind of domain expertise and so on so when you are solving these bigger problems a you really need to start to bring together right and start collaborating with people uh who bring complementary expertise to you to what you have and and i would say it's it's often right in your career you should be working on such more ambitious problems uh because of two reasons right one is that your rate of learning is much higher when you work on these challenging problems outside your immediate comfort zone uh, because you are learning so many new things uh, often right from your teammates who bring that complementary expertise so even if you fail at that at that uh, project right in that project at solving that problem you have still learned a lot right so even if you fail sometimes it's i mean often it is worth it to work on those challenging problems because you are learning so much and and many of these failures right are paving the way for bigger success down the road and the other aspect is that if you succeed even once or twice the both the the recognition that you get from the community which is what often researchers crave for but more importantly ultimately it's also the sense of self satisfaction your own sense of self satisfaction is going to be much higher when you solve when you come up with good solutions to a meaningful problem than when you only do some incremental work and yes you've got that paper published and and when you look back upon your career and you say oh i have written all these 100 papers uh if those are all incremental papers i can assure you you're not going to get that same sense of satisfaction as you would get even if you have solved let's say two problem forget two problem even if you have solved one problem that really made a made a big difference right to the world uh you're going to feel much greater sense of satisfaction uh and of course i would also say i encourage the young researchers to take a longer term view and i also i mean even for i mean honestly we are all also motivated often by the recognition fame and so on i mean if you look at kind of people getting major awards right when people get major awards let's say like nobel prizes and other fields during award in the area of computing they get they get these major awards right usually for one defining accomplishment right or a very small set of major accomplishments right nobody gets a major award oh because they've written 500 papers that have 500000 citations nobody gets a major award for for just producing a body of work people get major recognition for making really like outstanding contributions to a few major problems and i would say even you get a lot more satisfaction out of that which is why i and and often that doesn't come naturally to us uh the natural tendency often is to work on those incremental kind of problems uh which is why i think that this is very very important um and something to be very very deliberate about uh uh when when you are pursuing a research career i i i love this perspective and i'm like i'm there's nothing much i can add as in because i'm i think i'm i'm still in that uh, very minimalistic uh short view but i think from what i understand is like it's important to zoom out a bit and see what what kind of impacts we can do and if the impact is very less then maybe it's not worth solving or maybe we can have a lesser uh, bandwidth to that particular project but it's important to zoom out and see 
what is the bigger charter charter that we can address and start working on that because it's like even if you're working on big project if it doesn't happen to be the best thing but at least you did something better than the uh, the smaller impacts that you have so i i, I really love that thing yeah yeah it's it, this is something i realize um, can only come from senior people because we as students we don't have the breadth of exposure uh, for the entire field let let alone computer vision or ai which is like rapidly developing so i think this is very important from uh, for us to hear that okay please zoom out and work no, on i want to i understand. want to no i want to correct you over there i mean not i i shouldn't say use the word correct you but i mean i beg to differ because sometimes i feel younger people are capable of much bigger things than <laughs> older people like me uh, and most of the time i would say see because when you are a junior researcher and so on right um one of the things one of the strengths you have is you're not burdened by conventional wisdom because one of the things that often affects as you kind of get entrenched in a given field um while on one hand you kind of gain that experience all those insights and so on uh one of the things that happens is you start i mean you, you get too embedded in the conventional way of thinking about it right because you've been thinking about that problem for years and you are talking to these other researchers who are also thinking about these problem for years and so on right so sometimes it makes your perspective a bit stale and the power of young researchers is you don't have that problem of <laughs> yeah being burdened by conventional wisdom right so often uh you guys who are young you have some big advantages over people like me right who are more senior more experienced and so on right so which is why i wanted to challenge you that don't think that oh, you have to whatever have those years of experience and so on right before you will really be able to accomplish those big things no often young researchers achieve breakthroughs uh, that elude uh, experienced people and in fact there is that theory right there is that uh, try to remember what was that book medici effect which had that uh, kind of a claim that most breakthroughs right in the history um, uh, in our human history have come from either very young people or people who were new to a field uh, mm. that they may have been experienced but they were new to a field and the reason they were able to come up with those breakthroughs is because they weren't burdened by conventional wisdom so i don't want to get into the debate look there are plenty of also breakthroughs that have come from very experienced uh, researchers uh, so i don't want to minimize that but there is that line of thought right which yeah. uh, which has a certain merit to it and so don't underestimate your own capability right as a young researcher and so don't be afraid to dream big Uh, and achieve those those big things yeah definitely 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 yeah yeah it's a nice way to put it like that yeah yeah i agree i agree